Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George Massey, and this is the Buzzardite Show. My name, my nickname, anyway, is Buzzard. It's not the one my mother gave me. She's down at the post office the other day, and some lady had seen our television show, and they were talking about it as they was getting their mail, and one lady commented the other, and she said, what kind of a woman named her son Buzzard? My mother spoke up, and she said, I didn't name him Buzzard. I named him George. That's just what his friends call him. And my friends do call me Buzzer, that's my nickname. I've been prospecting for now on 30 years. And this show is sponsored by the Gold Prospectors Association of America. And one of these days, old Buzzer tell you how he got that nickname. I'm gonna give you a little Robert Service, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Service was the great poet that made it up north over the Chillicoot and out to the great Klondike Gold Rush and into Alaska, and he kind of wrote the, he wrote the heart of the way a lot of us feel and on this show today. I'm going to do The Prospector by Robert Service. I've got Jake Hardwick coming on the show. He's got some letters, some real startling finds, some nice gold being found on the mining claims out there and properties that are open to the GPAA members. And we're going to talk about how to read a USGS map. All the time guys write in and say, well, Buzzard, I had a hard time finding this claim or that claim. Maybe I can shed some light on it. And we'll take that mining guide and figure out how to find our way to some of those claims. But first, let me give you my rendition of The Prospector by Robert Service. And I've got some, I've got some old time pictures here I'd like to show you and that'll get you all in the good warm feeling of gold fever and you can forget about everything that's going on in the world today. All them hardships, snakes and pains and Somalians and poor guys dying and Rush Limbaugh and all of the stuff that Clinton's pulling on us and everything. You can just think about prospecting with old Buzzard here. Let's just do it. I strolled up old Bonanza where I staked in 98 a purpose to revisit the old claim. I kept thinking mighty sadly of the funny ways of fate and the lads who once were with me in the game. Poor boys down and outers and there's scarcely one today can show a dozen colors in his poke. And me, well, I'm still prospecting old, battered, gaunt, and gray, and I'm looking for a grub stake, and I'm broke. I strolled up old Bonanza, the same old moon looked down, the same old landmark seemed to yearn to me, but the cabins all were silent, and the flat, once like a town, was mighty still and lonesome like to see. There were piles and piles of tailings where we toiled with pick and pan, and turning round to Ben, I heard a roar, and there a giant gold ship of the very newest plan was tearing chunks of pay dirt from the shore. It wallowed in its waterbed, it burrowed, heave, and swung, it gnawed its way ahead with grunts and sighs. Its bill of fare was rock and sand, and tailings were its dung. It glared around with fierce electric eyes. Full thirty buckets crammed its maw, it bellowed out for more, it looked like some great monster in the gloom. With two to feed, its ceaseless greed, it worked for seven score, and I sighed, ah, old time miner, here's your doom. The idle windlass turns to rust, the sagging sluice box falls, the holes you dug are filled with water to the brim. The little sod roof cabins with their snugly moss chinked walls are deadly now and molding and dim. The battlefield is silent, where we of old we fought it out, the claims you fairly fought, lost, and sold. But there's a little army that they'll never put their out, the men who simply live to seek the gold. The men who can't remember when they learned to swing a pack, or in what lawless land the quest began. The solitary seeker with his grub stake on his back, the restless buccaneer of pick and pan. On the mesas of the Southland, on the tundras of the North, you'll find us changed in face, but still the same. And it isn't need, no, it isn't greed, that sends us faring forth, it's the fever. It's the glory of the game. And once, my friend, you've panned that speckled sand and seen that bony dust, its peerless brightness blinds you like a spell. It's little else you care about, you go because you must. And you feel you'd follow it to hell. You'd follow it in hunger, you'd follow it in cold, you'd follow it in solitude and pain. 
And when you're stiff and battered down, let someone whisper goal and you'll rise and leafed up again and follow it again. Yet look you, if you find the stuff, it's just like so much dirt, you fling it to the four white winds like a child. It's painted women, it's the things that do me hurt, till I crawl back beggared broken to the wild. Till I crawl back snap and sodden to my grub stake in my tent. There's a city, there's an army, hear them shout. There's the gold and million millions, but I haven't got a cent, and always me, it's me that found it out. It was my dream that made it good, my dream that made me go to the lands of dread and death deprived by man. But oh, I've known a glory that them city folks, that their hearts will never know when I picked the first big nugget from my pan. And it's still my dream, my dauntless dream that drives me forth once more to seek and starve and suffer in the vast that heaps my heart with eager hope and glimmers on before, my dream that will uplift me to the last. Perhaps I am stark crazy, but there's none of you too sane, and it's just a little matter of degree. My hobby is to hunt our gold. It's forced it in my brain. It's life and love and wife and home to me, and I'll strike it, yes, I'll strike it. I've a hunch I cannot fail. I've a vision, I've a prompting, I've a call. I hear the horse stampeding of an army on my trail to the last and greatest goal camp of them all. Beyond the shark tooth ranges, sawing savage in the sky, there's lowering land no white man ever struck. There's gold, there's gold in millions. And I'll find it if I die, and I'm going there once more to try my luck. And maybe I'll fail, what matter? It's a mandate, it's a vow. And when in lands of dreariness and dread, you seek the last lone frontier, far beyond your frontiers now, you'll find the old prospector silent, dead. You'll find a tattered tent pole and a ragged robe below it. You'll find a rusted gold pan on the sod. You'll find a claim that's seeking, that I'm seeking, with my bones as stakes to show it. But I've sought that last recorder, and he's God. Boy, old Robert Service, he sure, he sure found his way through to our heart, didn't he? I tell you what, folks, it's our heritage. There's probably nobody out there that, uh, that doesn't have somebody in their family tree that participated in one of the great gold rushes from Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee, Oklahoma, that little corner of Oklahoma where they went in there and found nuggets as big as your fist. Not too many people know about that. Upstate New York. Then the big gold rush to California that was so publicized, even our president got involved in it. President Polk. Hadn't been so long ago when you think about it. And, uh, you know, then from there they came into Arizona and Colorado and Pikes Peak and up into... Washington and Montana and last chance Gulf there, you know, and then clear on up into Canada along the Fraser and the British Columbia and Lytton and all those towns up through there and then they struck gold and in Alaska and came around and went up to Chillicoot and over into the Klondike and on the Klondike Bonanza Creek run a thousand ounces per cubic foot of bedrock gravel. Rich rich pay gravel down there on the bedrock. Then down the Yukon, clear in and struck their pick on the ice snow, went right on across into Siberia and over there, on the other side, there's a town named Discovery. And then of course, when the Bolsheviks started all their trouble, the prospectors had to leave, otherwise Russia would Russia be as rich a country as this one. Because it was that gold, it was that wealth that brought out of the ground that made the Industrial Revolution possible, ladies and gentlemen, and it's still here. And every time it changes hands, every time somebody makes a profit on it, the government gets more taxes out of it. And yet there's people that would try to deny your access to public land. Just amazing. Here your heritage is. My heritage. I, I got plenty of places to go prospecting. It's not going to affect me very much, but it sure don't say much for me and you as men and women if we don't leave some of these cherished freedoms to follow behind us to these kids coming up.